Hello everyone, this is Tecna Rose. Today I'm going to walk you through how I upgraded my Acer Nitro 5, adding more RAM, a faster SSD, replacing the Wi-Fi card and refreshing the thermal paste. I'll show you the process, the parts I used and real world results in games, streaming and video editing. Before you start watching this video, don't try anything at home, even if I say you can. You ask me why, you are going fine now. Layer. Out of the box my Nitro 5 came with an AMD Ryzen 7 5800H, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 laptop GPU, 16GB of DDR4 RAM at 3200MHz, a Kingston NV1 512GB SSD and the original Wi-Fi 6 card. It also has Bluetooth 5.1 and a 15.6 inch Full HD IPS display at 144Hz with an RGB backlit keyboard. For my workflow, streaming on OBS, editing in Premiere Pro and gaming 16GB of RAM and the NV1 SSD just weren't enough. Plus, the stock Wi-Fi card worked fine but I wanted faster, more stable wireless for large file uploads and streaming so I went for a Wi-Fi 6E upgrade. Here Here's what I originally had, two Micron AGB RAM sticks, the Kingston NV1 SSD and the stock Wi-Fi card. I've already upgraded, but for this video I'll demonstrate the process by putting this back in temporarily so you can see how it's done. First unplug the laptop and hold the power button for a few seconds to discharge any remaining power. Remove all the screws from the bottom panel and carefully lift it with the plastic pry tool. Inside you will see the RAM slots, the two M2 SSD slots, the Wi-Fi card and the dual fan cooling system. Let's start with the RAM. First remove the old RAM modules by gently pushing the clips on each side so the module pops up. Then insert the module at angle, push down until it clicks and repeat for the second slot. In my upgrade I went with 32 GB of DDR4 at 3200 MHz dual rank. More RAM helps with multitasking, editing in Premiere with multiple programs open or streaming and gaming at the same time without stutters. To install the SSD I first line up the connector with the slot and the slide the drive in at about a 30 degree angle. When it's fully seated I press it down gently until it's parallel with the motherboard, then secure it with the screw so it stays firmly in place. My upgrade is a Samsung 990 Pro and it's running at PCLE 4.0 speeds here. Before all that I also removed my Samsung SSD and added 0.5mm thermal pad. These pads help transfer heat to the metal cover so the drive stays cooler and it doesn't throttle under the heavy loads. The 99 Pro is known to run hot, so this is a simple way to keep it a bit cooler. SSD speed help with loading large files, booting windows and moving big video projects. The Wi-Fi card sits under two small antenna cables. Gently pop off the cables, remove the single screw and slide the card out. I replaced mine with the Wi-Fi 6E model for the better range, faster speed and lower latency. Great for online gaming and high bitrate streaming. Of course, to actually use Wi-Fi 6E you need a router that supports the 6 GHz band otherwise it will work as regular Wi-Fi 6. While I was inside I also replaced the thermal paste on the CPU and GPU. First of all I put on gloves mostly to avoid getting oils from my hands on the components. Then I disconnected the battery to make sure no power was running through the board while I worked. Next I unplugged the two fan connectors out of the screen connector and the Wi-Fi card. Then removed two screws from each fan and seven more screws around the heatsink in the numbered order printed on the board. There are also small adhesive strips on the fans that need to be peeled off before you can leave the whole cooling assembly. Once it was off, it was obvious the old paste on both the CPU and GPU had completely dried out. I used a cleaning kit with a special isopropyl alcohol wipe to remove as much of the old paste as I could. The fans were dusty too. I didn't have a proper brush so I carefully vacuumed them. Some of the thermal pads were still in good shape but in a few spots I removed the old ones and added some fresh thermal paste. For the new paste I went with the classic P size drop method trying to estimate the right amount by eye. Reassembling everything was tricky, the screws were tight and it took a while to get them all back in place. Finally I got everything tightened down as best as I could, put the laptop back together and I tried to power it on. 
unfortunately the laptop didn't power on after reassembly and there was even a burning plastic smell. When I opened it again, nothing looked burnt at first, but after the second try the area near the SSD actually failed. I was told it couldn't be repaired. Looking back, there are few possible reasons why this happened. I didn't wear gloves consistently, even the natural oils from your hands can damage delicate electronics over time. I might have needed to replace the original pink thermal pads with proper ones instead of reusing them. I used basic tools and maybe I didn't tighten every screw correctly or applied uneven pressure. Possible I didn't apply enough thermal paste or worse, some of it might have spread where it shouldn't have, causing a shard. Maybe some of you have had similar experiences. Let me know in the comments what you think could have gone wrong or if you ever had something like this happen. I wasn't too upset to be honest. I had already pushed this laptop to its limits for the kind of video editing, game streaming and daily use I needed. It just wasn't powerful enough anymore, even after the upgrades. So, get ready for what comes next. If you want to see what I upgraded to, let me know in the comments and hit the like button. I will release a full review of my new laptop soon.